motivational speaker and someone you should really get to know. So I'm your um, your host, Vanessa Asburn. And I'm your co-host, King James. All right, so um, we just have to talk about a couple things. I kind of feel like it's been so long since I've been here, even though it was just, you know, last Saturday. But, you know, the energy right now in the universe, you know, everybody going through a little sun right now. Um, just to keep it honest, you know, uh, the last two weeks and this week alone, we're going through a lot of transformational energy, okay? So a lot of things coming to the surface in your love life, um, with your career, finances, just everything in general. So I came to uh, realize that we're basically, um, anything that, that does not serve you any longer is gonna start coming up to the forefront. So some people are, you know, repeating past lessons, um, you know, love coming up, anything that hurt you in the past, any trauma, but all this has to come up to the surface so we can actually transmute that energy, clear that energy, and, you know, repurpose that energy um, for the light, to better yourself, so you can get to know your higher self, and make the transformation that is actually needed during these times. What you think about that, James? Do you think, um, what kind of energy have you experienced this week, or what do you think is happening this week with the collective, and even you in general? Um, I think the collective is going through a major um, shift, um, mm -hmm. a shift in the paradigms um, for everyone to be on one accord mm -hmm. that are receptive and open to mm -hmm. having that experience. Um, Absolutely. So that's what you have to be open to having that experience because you know, and that's what that's where we get surrendering from. You have to surrender to these energies and to these problems and make your way through them because if you keep putting it on the back burner, that's how things accumulate in your body and become negative energy. That's where dis ease comes from, illness, you know, cancer, all that stuff. So you know, it might be hard in that moment trying to process the energy and kind of transmute it from negative to positive, but it's always a lesson to be learned, and um, it's definitely going to make you a better person. You so, said what? Disease? Disease. Dis I don't say ease. disease. I said I, I like that call dis it dis-ease. Dis-ease. Right, because that's not what it disease, is. Not disease, but dis-ease. Right, that's a dis-ease because the energy that's in your body that um, has accumulated because of the lower density frequencies and the low vibrational energy. The what density? The density. Yes. From See, the I said disease. That, yeah. yeah, the density from the disease or disease. I like that. Yeah, that's where it comes from. So everything, you know, it starts in your root chakra, your lower chakras, you know, that's where we accumulate the most energy. And you know, starting from our waist down, because you know, we absorb a lot and you know the trauma comes from a lot of times you know childhood Child and how you were raised by your mother and father or what you've been through so all that starts at your root chakra um so yeah that's a lot of dense energy so once we learn to transmute that energy we can actually start clearing our chakras and becoming more into alignment so let's talk oh, about yeah. that let's let's, let's talk, talk about, about those chakras and yeah. the waist down mm -hmm. um so my birthday was yesterday yeah and um, her birthday was on the 23rd. February 23rd. And one of the things that I was not aware of when I booked her, her um, birthday surprise, her birthday surprise mm -hmm. and when she did mine was um, it, it correlated and it, it was synchronized with um, synchronicity and, 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 mm -hmm. um, and what we're going through right now. Your, your right. evolution um, involvement. So I have planned her something at um, uh, cryotherapy. Shout out to cryotherapy. Yes, definitely. Um, it's kind of like a, a cold tank. Um, you get in, it's freezing cold. She experienced mm. it. Yeah. All this is Super on the, um, all this is on the, the page as well. Um, she get in, it's it's cold, and after that she got to uh, uh, infrared sauna, and then she had uh, some compression done yeah. to her feet. Mm -hmm. So let's break those down. Well, the first one was um, the the cold tank. That's air. Um, the second one was fire, and all of these are elements uh -huh. of um, the, the, the universe. universe. So you yeah. had air from the cold tank. You had the fire from the sauna. Then you had um, earth, which was the the compression while she was sitting on the ground. 
Right, grounding. Um, the grounding mm -hmm. on her root chakras, which is mm -hmm. her feet. And yeah. if you look at yourself as a tree, um, your feet are your your, your roots. Um, and then having your feet on bad ground will help ground you to Mother Earth. So right. she did that as well. Then we left there and went to uh, Floating Spot Carry, uh, where she got into some water. That's the fourth element, which is water. During her float time, of her floating mm -hmm. to her uh, sauna time, she went to sleep. That's the fifth element, spirit. Right. That's that's five elements. Yeah. So if you remember the cartoon, uh, what's the Captain the, Planet? Captain Planet. Mm -hmm. He was the fifth element. Captain Planet. So I'm not gonna. Say Anybody? Y'all know that? Mm -hmm. That's the fifth. That's the fifth. That's the fifth yeah, element. I, yeah. You know, I kind of feel like um, we're giving clues, or you know, just how TV goes goes now, you know, on how we uh, get clues and stuff from cartoons or TV shows or movies and stuff. So I never really looked at Captain Planet like that. And now that I'm older and I'm going through this spiritual journey, I'm just like, wow. So, you know, and each each person in Captain Planet had obviously, you know, a particular job and they were good at doing, you know, particular things. They was the avatars. Yeah, exactly. Like the like the cartoon, the the Avatar, the yeah. last airbender, mm -hmm. all of them had powers. Every cartoon on that show had right. Airbending abilities, water yeah. building abilities. Mm -hmm. So everybody on that cat, that that TV show, the yeah. cartoon, uh -huh. had abilities. Right. Um, but yep. we all have those abilities. We sure do. Within ourselves. We sure do. Um, we're gonna yeah, have to get to that. We're gonna have to definitely get into that another show because I'm super I interested. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for that. Ready I'm super all interested all. in learning how to bend fire and air. Um, it's already being done. Already, you know, seeing people. I connected with people who do it, so I downloaded the uh, yeah. the class. Oh yeah, you remember the so video wanna, scene? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah, I definitely want to tap into that. But it was an awesome experience uh, for my birthday. It was just it was awesome. So floating in um, a water pod. This water pod has only about ten inches of water in it, but it has one thousand pounds of Epsom salt. So just imagine how you feel if you take a, a standard bath with Epsom salt, and just imagine you know, times to that times 1,000. So, you know, you're in this water pod and they have like, you know, these um, these bright, beautiful lights, um, like purple and all these different colors, blue, whatever green, whatever choice, you know, whatever Shock color you want to choose. Color. Yeah, absolutely. And then they also playing, you know, this high frequency music. So you're just super relaxed, you're in your zone. I actually started, um, seeing like different shapes and seeing me go through like different portals because you know your your body is relaxed um body mind and spirit all at the same time so that was definitely a wonderful experience for me for sure the whole birthday was but i actually uh wanted to surprise james for his birthday so we went to rally and carry for my experience for the full spa and the cryotherapy um but I actually found another location called Simply Massage um, in Burlington, North Carolina, and that's where I scheduled Jane's birthday. So I scheduled him a one-hour massage, and then I scheduled him a one-hour in the float therapy water pod, and then we did 25 minutes sauna. in the um, infrared sauna. And then after that, we did, um, yes, a, a foot scrub and a foot massage. So I just wanted to surprise him with, you know, a, a special self-love and self-care day because it all starts with us. It all starts with you. So even though we're in a relationship and, you know, you know, everything is going great, is we always need to pamper ourselves and put ourselves first. So that was my gift for him um, because I want to, you know, share that energy of self-love and putting yourself first. You know, we all need that. Let me break that down for everyone who missed what happened. Both of these events was on our birth, let me rephrase, on our born day. Mm -hmm. Every day is your birthday because you're birthed a new day. Right. You were only born once. We right. were birthed every day. I know that. So right. this was done on my birth of, of my born, born day, day and on her born day, uh, which means more, you know, to that individual. Uh, but for my massage, one of my messages that we had um, pulled for me was taking better care of my health, which is mm -hmm. one of the reasons why um, I'm eating healthy, exercising, etc. Mm -hmm. um, 
if you look at one of our past uh, episodes, uh, I told you I'm all about transparency. I, yes, I, I, absolutely. I feel like that's what that's what we have a lot wrong with the world is mm -hmm. a lot of people have so many secrets that they don't mm -hmm. want to they're afraid of being vulnerable mm -hmm. so they don't want to expose or share right. like the deep things because they don't even like it themselves so right. they try to hide yeah. it sweep it on the road like mm -hmm. but that comes with you know that that comes from you know just experience trauma and you know and all that so but yeah absolutely um, you know, so it's hard to sometimes, you know, for some people. But as long as you keep trying, you'll get through it. Yeah. Um, but my my highest weight was five oh six. Um, and me and Nessa started a uh, competition or contest for <laughs> losing the most weight. And when we started, I was four ninety three. Yeah, four ninety three. And I lost. The, the, yeah. after, after the end of the year, last year, I was 470. Yeah, something like that. It was like a third, it was like close to 30 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, my current weight is 452. Look at that. Look at God. Yeah, you just got to, you know, we're pushing. We notice, you know, what we, we notice what we want. We know where we want to be, right? You know, uh, because being spiritually healthy is great, you know, being in high alignment is great, but that's, you know, a mental thing, that's a spirit thing. So what we're trying to do right now, what we are doing right now, is putting our body frequency in alignment with our mental frequency. And that's the and important thing, because yeah. your body and your mind, your mindset, mm -hmm. all that holds light, all that holds right. energy. energy. So if your mm -hmm. weight, or if your health, or if your mindset, or if your whatever, if, if it's not where it needs to be, you cannot hold light in that area. Right, exactly. And we are in a space and time where mind, body, and soul needs to be in alignment. If right. those three mm -hmm. things are not in alignment, you can't Absolutely. hold that light to elevate. Because exactly. we're all, we're we're in a time of energy, yeah. frequency, and vibration. Absolutely. Which if you take energy, frequency, vibration, that's mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. So if you can't hold light in those areas, then you need to you know, work on that. Yeah. But um, and, and different ways you could work on that is through exercise because when energy, that's why, you know, our muscles get, you know, we feel that uh, pain in our muscles or soreness, sometimes that's just energy that's trapped and it needs, you know, to be released. Um, so any body aches, uh, so exercising or even stretching will help uh, for sure. But the food that we eat has a frequency too. And not a lot of people really realize that. But, you know, you have to um, be in alignment with the food that you're eating as well. You have to be in line with your body. Yeah, to know your body foods, would know. Exactly. What food it wants. Right. Your body will let you know. Exactly. So, you know, that's what <clears throat> that's what our journey um, is now, is trying to, you know, just uh, make our body frequency more in alignment with where we're at mentally and spiritually. But um, as far as our birthdays, you know, it was a great experience. Um, I would definitely recommend that for everyone. I'm about to get back into the details about what happened, though. Because <laughs> <laughs> they need to know. Because um, it didn't dawn on me until it happened. So, yeah. like, after we did yours, I had a download. It was like, <laughs> did you know that you had all the elements and then you went to sleep? Oh, and then there was, you? no, for yours. Oh, yeah. You had all the elements mm -hmm. and then spirit. I'm like, I, I never, yeah, I didn't realize. How the hell did I do that? <clears throat> and then you did the same thing, but yours was in a different way because yeah. it, it, it encompassed all the elements, but it also involved the mind, body, and soul because the body part was me taking care of my mm -hmm. body by the massage. Right. And then I already had spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so we did water, we did the sauna, and then we did yeah. the earth. So um, the infrared sauna was that's, the... That's three of the five. No, that's four of the five. Uh -huh. So which one's missing? Air. I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, so we did that. The water popped for me. Um, I love water. I'm a Pisces, so I love water. And that was the, that's the water. And then the fire was the sauna. And then the earth part came in when she... It's kind of like uh, when I was breaking up the, the tree. Like you are a tree, and then your feet are your yes. roots. Mm -hmm. um, and then when God comes in, he'll uproot you, mm -hmm. clean you off, and then plant you somewhere else. That's what just happened to me on my birthday. I was uplifted, mm -hmm. 
my feet were cleaned off and now I was planted into uh, a new environment or a new opportunity or new blessing um, based on that massage because when I left the massage, I didn't even want shoes on my feet. Sure did not, I was walking barefoot. I walked outside <laughs> barefoot so I can put my feet, my new roots on that ground. And when we got home, um, we got home, um, it, it was a, a very, a very good a good time when I got home because I was like, I'm, I'm trying to go to sleep. But someone was like, no, you need to go outside, suck up some of the sun. So I went outside and uh, went on my back porch and it was like, you need to write your manifestations. Mm -hmm. Because if you manifest in that clear, that clear state, it's a lot easier. Um, so I went in, I wrote a quick manifestation and dry, uh, wrote down everything that I want to manifest at that moment. Um, Vanessa had brought me some uh, birthday balloons and a part of me was like, why don't you take these balloons and let them go, let them free. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it, That's taped it idea. to my balloons, yeah. went outside, still no shoes. I put my feet on that ground as I'm grounding myself, I let those balloons go. The balloons literally went up and arced mm -hmm. and went out. Me and Nessa stood there, and as we looking at these balloons go out, we're saying manifestations, we're saying yeah. aspirations, we're saying everything that we wanted that message and those balloons to do and go and reach new heights. Yes, I, I kind of feel like it was a message there as well, because what we don't realize is that spirit will always send you different messages and, um, you know, you're you're always being uh, tended to. You're always being held, whether you realize that or not. So when you scroll on Facebook or Instagram, and you know you're um, you're in a certain place in your life, if you are searching for answers, you might you know come across certain like screenshots or you know different things that um, actually resonate oh, with you. I'm about to get in there mm -hmm. too because that was another one. The screenshots on oh, the back yeah, porch. That we were seeing, yeah. On the back porch. Yeah, but um, I just want to quickly say a message. And okay, about okay about the balloons and spirit. So um, how the balloons were? They flew out steady. They flew out steady, like on a certain level. And then all of a sudden, they shot up vertically, and then it just kept going up from there. And um, this is why I'm saying that spirit will always, you know, show you certain things because. I was just like, hmm, you know, that's probably going to be how our life is going to be because we, we keep getting things, um, you know, the universe telling us about how, you know, financial success, abundance, yeah, synchronicities, financial success, abundance, like our, our life's about to change pretty soon. So when I looked at those balloons, I was like, wow, this is definitely, you know, a message from spirit. Yeah, those balloons literally art, part to and then mm -hmm. it just went straight and up. It shot up. It didn't, yep. it didn't go up, it just went whoop. Right. Like it literally mm -hmm. just climbed. And I was like, those balloons are like rising up. Right. So it was definitely a message. Um, for sure. But I know a lot of people are like, okay, he already said spirit, water. Um, he said spirit, water, um, earth. earth, and fire. Where's the air? While we was doing this, the air was blowing on us. Yeah, it was. Like it was blowing Strong. like it was windy outside mm -hmm. i'm like there's your air yep so i didn't even realize i was when i put your birthday together um i did not realize i was doing it like that actually you, you know didn't, you didn't know but you were divinely guided exactly exactly because when i called i was just like yeah so i see you guys our name you know simply massage i know you offer massages but what else you you have here you know and she was telling me everything over the phone. I was just like, yeah, let, yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Let's add that too and that too. So uh, James ended up getting four back-to-back -back services and just feeling super amazing, super great. So yeah, um, like that was king. awesome. Exactly. And you know, and we had to do that. You know, we had to do that for one another because this is what I tell all my clients, being a tarot card reader. Right now, we're in the energy of, what do I want? Okay. What do I have? So if your actions, if who you're entertaining, who you're sleeping with, if your friends who are around you, whatever it is, whatever you're doing right now, just ask yourself, okay, is this in alignment to where I want to be or where I want to go? Not just this, 
are they yes. in alignment of where exactly. I need to be? Because mm -hmm. your friends and your family will be the first ones to bring you down. To exactly. Outside of yourself. Yeah, and sometimes it does take, you know, disconnecting or, uh, you know, um, detaching from certain individuals or situations. But that's where we're at right now. So when it comes to everything you're engulfed in, career, love, finance, family, friends, ask yourself, okay, this is where I want to be. And this is where I want to go. But is is the things I have, you know, currently right now in life actually in alignment with what I'm doing? Because I think that's the first disconnect we have to realize, you know, because it all starts with our actions and where we're headed and what it is we're actually doing to get there. You know, make it make sense. So that's what I've been trying to tell my clients because, you know, yeah, you could have been with someone for 5, 10, 15, 20 30, 50 years, but, you know, are they still in alignment with you? That's the question to ask, you know. Are your friends still in alignment with you? I mean, to a certain extent, we are all on the same consciousness, yes, but um, you want to make sure you can always rise, well, raise your consciousness and awareness. Um, so in order to do that, you have to be around situations, people, places, and things that are matching your frequency. Well, one of the things, too, is um, as you rise, mm -hmm. you will attract the people that need to be in exactly. life. Exactly. But as you rise, you will realize that mm -hmm. the people who always felt like they were better than you or didn't want you to see, mm -hmm. like... Yeah, they'll start thinking about it. They'll, no, they'll start hating on you. They'll start be like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't change. No, I have not changed at all. Well, I mean, you have to change, though. Because... I mean, in order to kill the old you, to rise up from, like a phoenix, to rise up from the ashes, you have to kill the old you. So you're literally shedding everything that does no longer serve you, everything that doesn't serve you anymore, you're shedding that. You're shedding your old ways of uh, thinking. You're shedding your old ways of being and doing in order to you know, make it through that energy and come out on the other side and be the better version of you. So you're shedding older versions. And, and you know, some people are so attracted to, or they're so in alignment with that lower frequency or your the past version of you. So when you do uh, elevate or your consciousness becomes, you know, it, it expands, it becomes bigger, then that's when it comes into, oh, you changed, or oh, you used to do this, and now you don't do that anymore. Because they're being um, attracted to the old version of you. So not everyone is ready for, you know, the new person to arise. But talking about attraction and, you know, raising frequency, you know, we're definitely going to be talking more about this today with our special guest, Brian Hippolyte. He has a whole book of keynotes. I mean, when I say this man right here is wow. When I first heard his voice, because my boyfriend signed up with um, his class and, uh, his motivational speaking I listen in to his it every community, morning. yes. And James listened to it every. King James listens to it every morning. Um, so when I heard it one time on the balcony, I was just like, "Oh, like who is that?" His voice is just so demanding, and I'm going to use this word penetrating because I feel like his energy penetrates through like your soul and your frequency, even your heart. Like when you hear his voice, and I was like, "Wow, that's so powerful." So James listened to it every morning. And it definitely has been changing his mindset. Like, he like, look, if it ain't positive, I don't even want it. I don't want it. I don't even want to talk about I, it. I don't want to hear it. And that's how I uh, conduct myself in the yep. sense of Facts. You know, interacting with people. If, if what you have to say is not, one, necessary, benefiting me, mm -hmm. helping me or you grow or mm -hmm. get some money, I don't want to hear it. Exactly. And you, that's how you got to be. You have to protect your energy and know what you want, you know? Um, so we're definitely going to get more into this. But I want to get back to this synchronicity, though. That, that okay. So, oh. But go ahead. We gotta. Um, we have a couple more minutes. This won't be long. Um, but it was crazy. So let's go ahead and talk. About so it. me and Ness was on uh, Facebook. Um, we was on my phone, and the time had read five fifteen. I looked at uh, my my notifications. I had thirty four notifications mm -hmm. uh, on my phone because it was my birthday. Um, 
but the 34 is also my my age that you turn yeah that i turned that day yep um and then my battery was on 29 mm percent -hmm. and then i had four facebook messages in there um if you add all those numbers up it adds up to my birth year 87 87 yeah. So if yeah. you separate those and you add eight plus seven, you get fifteen. Mm -hmm. If you get um, if you separate those two numbers, you get six. One plus five, six. Uh -huh. Six is my life path number. Right. So that was just crazy synchronicity. It was crazy because I don't. I was just like, they screenshot your phone. Something told me to let him know to screenshot his phone, and then he put together the synchronicity. I was like, wow, on your actual birthday. So, and, and, you know, just talking to um, some of our other spiritual friends, we now know that the more synchronicities the universe shows you, the more in alignment you are right now with your life. So if you see an 11, 11, 12, 12 on the clock, you know, 1, 2, 3, 12, 34, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, that's the universe trying to get your attention, okay? So you can always go to Google and look up, Oh, what is angel number 333? Or what is angel number 1212? You know, it's always going to be an answer there for you. If you are, whatever your top three numbers are, or whatever, you know, what, um, whatever numbers you're attracted to on the clock, it doesn't have to be like 222 or 333. It could be any numbers. But um, do know <clears throat> that the universe is always trying to get your attention and always trying to communicate with you. So that's definitely, you know, one of the first steps that they, they try for sure. So we're going to talk about more about manifestation and being in alignment and, you know, um, dropping off or tearing apart or tearing away anything that no longer serves you. We're definitely about to get into that. But right now, I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this clip, part two of the I Am Affirmations from yours truly, well, not me, but Brian Hippolyte will be here. Um, on the show, interviewing via phone in just a bit. So we'll be right back after this music break. And you are now tuned in to Terror Talk on 105.1 Live.
<laughs> Welcome back to Tara Talk at 105.1 Live. It's nothing but, you know, high frequency, high energy, and high vibes in this studio right now. And we also have some live listeners. So I am super excited about our special guest. Um, I'm going to allow him to introduce his own self, but... You know, when I first heard him, you know, his voice just penetrates through your heart and your soul. Um, his material is awesome. His books are awesome. So um, go ahead, special guest. Let us know your name and where you're from. Uh, that was an amazing introduction. Thank you very much. You're um, welcome. My name is Brian Hippolyte. I'm known as the Manifest Mentor. I'm a artist. Um, Happy birthday, happy belated. Yes. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Happy belated to you. I'm going to eat the same one right here. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, good. Did you uh, enjoy yours? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely did. Mm hmm. That was definitely a, a whole experience. You know, it was a whole vibe. A whole vibe. Oh, absolutely. Yep. That's what it's supposed to be. Yep, exactly. That's what it's supposed to be. Exactly. I'm just, I feel so honored that you're here in our presence right now. Um, because I feel like, you know, this is the vibe for sure. And this is the universe bringing this energy um, towards us in this moment. So I want to ask, you know, um, manifestation, everyone is hearing about it. Everyone, I think, is starting to tap into it um, for the most part. Probably not everyone, but you know. So I, I want to ask you personally, um, how has manifest manifestation changed your life personally? I think, I think a lot of young men who grew up without a father um, can, can relate to that. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so it was looking at, you know, looking in, in the face of this, of, of this, of this young, not even one year old, that, made, that gave me the ambition, the, the, the desire, the right now, this is, we're going we to start figuring something out. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and, um, and just started by re identifying myself and, 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 and understanding. Wow, these, yeah, these words are so re-identifying yourself. How, how does somebody re-identify them, their self? Like what, take me through that process. Like, is it um, mentally as far as like your thoughts and stuff of that nature? It's understanding who you are and what you are. Mm. We, we grow up in a system in a society Wow. And 
just so like heartfelt like it it really is you can feel the energy when you speak you can feel your transformation you can feel the power behind your words like wow so what inspired um key number 41 if you do not deal with your pain it will form a mental prison you will be forced to deal with if you do not heal your mental pain yeah yeah, I think I, I've seen too many people. Um, and I, so I realized, it was one of these things that I realized from being on, once I got to the other side. And I realized that um, that was one of the things that I realized. Our pain, one, creates mental blockages. Mm. Pain, or not dealing with pain, not dealing with, uh, you know, so not, when I say not dealing with pain, I mean like uh, unforgiveness. Um, that's a big one. That's a huge one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not even necessarily not forgiving. I'm not forgiving someone else. I'm not forgiving yourself. There's a lot of most of what I'm dealing with is stuff. All this is stuff. All this is deep working with that. So self forgiveness. Yes. Mm -hmm. You actually had that in your book too. Yeah. Yeah. It's the it's, it's the most it's the most important thing. Um, some people even don't get further in this, and they feel like they let the situation go because they even if they quote unquote forgive. Someone else who may have been involved in it, but they never forgive themselves and they've been holding a grudge against themselves. Yep. Mm -hmm. And creating that own internal conflict. And, and, you know, and not being able to find peace and, and certain things like that. So, uh, forgiveness and, and confronting the triggers that came from it so that you are not reacting from that from that wound or nursing a wound that's already a scar. Wow. So when you say trigger, what's a trigger for people that don't understand what a trigger is? A trigger is a reaction that then and there almost seems natural to you, but it's coming from the, the root of it is from a trauma. The root of it is from an experience. So it, it could have been something that came from your environment, something that you've seen, something that you witnessed, or something that, or something that you was taught, but it's a behavior, an almost automatic behavior or response to something. Yeah. Based off of your a previous yeah. Um, triggers are deep. Triggers are deep because are, are deep. yeah, a lot of people think. The seeds is that that wound or that incident triggers are the fruit of them. Right. Which leads me to a, another question that we didn't ask, um, but it's uh, one of the later questions. And uh, and I when I read this to uh, my queen, she was like, "Oh my God, I like that." Bad fruits don't, uh, bad seeds don't lead to good fruit. You can't, you cannot deny the proof when there's poison at the roots. Some trees just can't be cut down. You gotta uproot. Uh, truth sounds like hate to those who hear, uh, hate to hear the truth. Yeah, when when um when we were listening to your audio and that part came up and James read it to me as well, I was like, wow, like. That's basically the sum of it all. Like, you know? Wow. Yeah. That's why I, I, I started, to, started to look with that. And yeah. And those mm -hmm. are uh, intro bars to one of my songs. And, oh, wow. And I just, and I just knew that one I was looking at the body of work that that was, that was it summed up. Oh, you didn't know Brian, Brian is also an artist. Brian, what? You an yeah. MC? Oh my gosh. Exclusive music video to my single that uh, May God Still Sit on Man Made Throne, which is the name of my single. What? Oh my goodness. I did not even know. Yeah. Wow, okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'll get it someday too. Yeah, we're. Um, we're, I'm going to post some links to your music for sure and look at what you sent me. I must have um, overlooked it in the email, but I know if 
if you are, um, if you're, how can I say, if your I am um, affirmations are how they are, if your writing abilities, being an author, is how they are, then I know your music is about to be like that, you know. So, that's, that's a fact. But yeah, I definitely agree with Key 41. That was my choice, uh, my favorite pick, because, you know, if you, I, as a tarot card reader, I deal with a lot of clients, and um, who's, you know, going through this exact same thing, basically, you know, creating this mental prison around their life or their thoughts or their frequency or the situations or people who they encounter all based off of them not healing, you know, their pain. So I definitely like, yeah. healing is a process. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to walk it out the rest of, you know, and heal the rest of I don't, I don't, I can't describe to that. I think healing is something that is, uh, is a revelation. Yeah. That takes that takes place, and then with with each revelation, with with, with each understanding, you then operate out of that understanding, which is the understanding. Which is in the book, like, people. Execution of that understanding. Mm-hmm. And you know that uh, you walk. I believe you walk out your healing, and every day, but that in holding it's not in healing like it's happening. No, I'm healed already. Mm-hmm. I'm walking. Out, I'm walking out my holiness. And, and we have to be impeccable with our words because I, really, I hear it so much that there's this notion that the healing process has to be this long, drawn out deep process. Now, it doesn't have to happen overnight either. Right. But, but right. you know, there's, there's, there's this message out there sometimes that we're always going to be here. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not going to describe that. I'm, I'm going to be whole. And I, and I teach everyone around me. Right. Operate Absolutely. I definitely agree. So, I want to know, uh, what event in your life caused you to start manifesting your reality? I know you uh, definitely spoke of your child. So, um, is there anything else that actually made you like, you know what, I can change this, you know? I can start, you know, thinking a certain type of way to change what's going on. Um. But when I realized I could manifest my reality, I wasn't on so I wasn't doing good stuff. So like I've always known that I've had this ability <laughs> to manifest the reality. Um and and to influence. We use my vibration and my energy to influence. And so when I realized that I could do it, it was when something tragic happened. Mm. And I and I had to step back. Not only did you do it like you did that, you did that, but can you aim you created a fatherless child? The one thing you never wanted someone else to have to go through. Because you created a bad situation that caused somebody that that and, and someone lost their life. And it was that situation that made you step back and realize that my energy was being used in the wrong way. Wow, I definitely feel that. Um, and I think that's where it starts for a lot of people as well. You know, life could be so unpredictable, and when you're hit with that situation, that kind of knock you off your feet. Man, you know what I'm talking about? When God comes in your life, he's like, okay, well, okay, well, let me help you surrender. Let me knock you down to your knees and get you to a, you know, a certain point where you feel like now I have to make this change. Now I want to make this change. I don't want to sit in this energy. I don't want to be in this situation. I don't want to stay here. So you have that moment to yourself where you just like, you know, like I surrender, you know? And it's that energy right there that is the beginning of, you know, a a change mindset, a beginning of a new process. So I definitely agree with that, like hands down. Which gets us into our next one. Uh, I think this was more of one of the ones that I want to know. Um, key number 83. Some friendships are trauma bonds. Mm. Okay. Let's um, talk about it. Key number 83, how did it, and, 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 and the question was how did I learn about it, how did I figure it out? Yeah, how did you figure that out? Um, I think that was something that just, when I found the word, when I heard about the word, it made like that, I, that just identified it. But I always knew, but I always knew. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely, definitely could always see it. Even um, <laughs> even in the same way at at, at a church, the two, the two people who are definitely cool, or the private people who are definitely cool, who've been hollering on on on, uh, on Saturday night at the club, 
James loves talking about this story, but it's really relevant. So I was always triggered by, well, when I met James and he said, let's go up the flow, that was a major trigger for me. But um, I had to realize, okay, well, when I got my mind right, it took me two years. I had to stop drinking, stop smoking, um, stop listening to different music, like trap music, because trap music traps your consciousness, if you did not know. But, you know, I had to um, cut myself off from a lot of different things in order to elevate. So during that process of getting to know myself and loving myself more, I finally could see, okay, well, I was just settling, you know, because now as, as a woman who I've become, I now know, okay, well, that's not good for me because if you don't know what you're looking for, I know what I'm looking for. So if, that, if you can't provide that, then that's not the energy I want. But when I actually got to that place, now I, I then attracted James, you know, so my frequency after elevating attracted what I was actually looking for. It was now in alignment with what I wanted, you know? Listen. Yes, it's deep, I'm telling you. So how long have you been writing, man? Uh, my whole life, my whole life. Like, I mean, my first uh, award-winning publication was in the third grade. Oh, wow. So awesome. So you knew from the jump <laughs> what you were into and what you wanted to do. Wow, that's your superpower. Huh. That's interesting. How long did it take you to realize and figure out what your superpower was? Now, I recently you heard you say on a, a live. Change lives, but I'm sorry, it's changing lives. Yeah, it's yeah, changing lives. Yeah, like now. I didn't expect, you know, I thought this show was probably pre COVID, like, you know, I thought I, I thought it was going to be doing um, book tours, and you know, selling books in the back of the room, doing public speaking, you know, something like that. Like, I didn't know, one, obviously, none of us knew that COVID was happening, but the way that, the way that it happened is my new life period of all 2019 campaign. You need to write this book. You need to write this book. And at the time I was recording, um, what at the time I was calling 111 Life Lessons. So oh. my birthday is 111. Everything has always been 111. I, I released a new product or a new piece of my own historical documentation, whether it's music or something, some creative form. You know, the every 11, oh. 11, 111. And, and it was just saying, like, so, like, as I was tweeting things, as I was captioning things, just different understandings that um, were coming to me. Bro, I'm going to uh, not to cut you off, um, but Nessa is still in shock right now that your birthday is 111. So she Google searched what 111 is, and I think she went to shock right now. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. She Google searched 111. Listen, you already know. Listen, you already know. Listen, and I think she wants to share it. Listen, listen, but you, you already <laughs> I think she know. wants to share it. You already know. My guys. I was saying on that frequency. Yes. Listen. My guys are sending me messages like, 111, go ahead and put that in uh, to Google. So angel number 111 signifies manifestation and prosperity. Um, so the number's main symbolism is manifesting thoughts into reality. Which he said so he you create are, his reality. Look, you're, you're definitely in your alignment. Like everything that's happening right now is supposed to be in a in alignment. Well, everything happening right now is in alignment and you're exactly where you're supposed to be. That's amazing. So you're born on 
January 11, 111. And, you know, and you're right now, you know, um, your book, Manifesting You, is about manifestation and prosperity and just, you know, finding that prosperity, I guess, within you. So that's just crazy. Well, that the fact that the universe rewards you for Oh, it, it definitely will. It definitely does. It does. I know when I was reading your book, I read it in the sense of like myself reading it, and then there was a shift that happened as I'm reading it. Because mm -hmm. as as when when everyone gets this book, I, I'm not. I mean, I can't really speak for everyone, but I know for me, as I was reading it, I felt like my higher self was reading it. And it was mm -hmm. kind of like a blueprint or guide for me to follow these steps. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm hmm That's exactly what it is. Um, so what are your top five keys from yes. the book that are personal to you and then the top five, your top five favorite keys for the collective? I got the book. It's right here. Repeat your uh, repeat these affirmations. This manifest an affirmation. And so, if, um, this is what I recorded for myself. Mm -hmm. So if this is what I recorded as what's called the Manifest University Pledge of Allegiance. So Manifest University, mm -hmm. my 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 community. Um, we speak these every day, and it's a realignment, it's a re readjustment, mm -hmm. edification of, of your spirit, a re-identification because no. Who you are is so important. Mm -hmm. If you know who you are, then you know what you are. If you know what you are, you know what you're supposed to do. You know who your enemy is. You know what you're good at. What you're, you know, you know. Right? So knowing who you are, also that you knowing who you are, let you know what you can conquer. Woo, man, that that just sent chills down my spine. What you can conquer. Wow. That is a looking at a wall like, oh man, I'm standing at a wall. Like you don't know you can scale that. Or you know you don't know what you can like you'll know what or you'll just know that that's not where you're supposed to go and you're walking in peace. Mm-hmm. You just gotta know who you are. And yeah. you know, and know that you're following the compass of your soul. Wow. Yeah, I'm at a point where I see a wall, I don't even want to climb, I'm just knocking down. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That's another thing. You you can also know you would also have the ability to knock me down. Right. You might have, you might have, just have a connection with someone at the top that you need to call them, like, but it's all there. Nothing's happening to you. Everything's happening for you. And the moment that you shift that shit, that paradigm, you begin to operate from the space of... There it is, Tim. You're not reacting to what comes at you. You have to just download and change the direction of your life. Yep. That's, that's facts. So what's the second key that Brian Hippolyte likes in, uh, for uh, himself? Um, Fifty-six. You have to believe in yourself beyond what your current situation or environment tells you. Mm. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Branches of wave, yes, but them roots are planted. The roots are planted. The roots not moving, the roots not worried, the roots are not bothered because it's anchored. Roots are 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 earlier of how the root chakra is so important because that's where all the trauma stems from 
Right. So yeah, so that's definitely facts right there. Um, so just for time's sake, uh, give us your two top keys for the collective. Two top keys for the collective. Yeah. Number 71. Yeah, this is Discipline is the strongest form of self love. Wow, I definitely can agree with that. Um, because if you're not disciplined, then how are you gonna how are you gonna be focused to make those necessary changes that you need to make in order to become a better version of you? Well, I would go into saying too, because I know Brian had it in his book about habits. If you have self-discipline, you can break those habits. Right, exactly. Or create those habits. Mm -hmm. Break those family curses. You know, you gotta be disciplined to step up to the plate and transmute that energy. You know, and uh, change bloodlines. Yeah. And what's the second key? Right. I care so much. I care more about this better version of myself, a better version of my of my life, than I care about mm -hmm. whatever. Right. And what's that second key for the collective? The second key, the second key, let's see. Um, we repeat what we don't repair. That'll be key number 26. Oh, man, that's a good one. I don't have to turn the book for that one. We repeat what we don't repair. Yeah, absolutely. Because, um... What, what the universe would do is they would bring you another situation. It could be in a different form, a different person, but you know, we're going to keep repeating those lessons um, until we work through that energy. It could be in a different form, a different way, but it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it will teach you a lot if, if, you, if you don't deny that you make it. Mm, right, right. Um, one of my favorite... One of my favorite angel cards to pull for my clients when I'm reading tarot is um, a, a card basically stating that, you know, you have to be, you have to set your mindset. You have to, um, you know, transform yourself. Um, this is like, you know, having self-confidence through God confidence. You know, that is definitely one of my, one of my favorite uh, cards. Because when that card comes up, that just means you have all the answers within you. You know, your mindset has to be a certain type of way. Um, but I, I also don't want people to think, you know, you, like you said, you got to wake up and just automatically be there. You know, it is a process. And as long as you are doing better than what you were doing yesterday or more than what you were doing yesterday, then you're already in alignment. You're already on the path. You know, um, it's not really... Exactly. Because spirit will be like, yeah, they had this situation, that situation, now, they, now they're dealing with this. And I'm just like, wait, hold on. Like, you went through, um, you went through, you know, domestic violence. You went through uh, a narcissist type of, you know, marriage or situation. Like, did you give yourself time to heal? Because if you didn't and you're looking for your next partner or relationship to fill your void, then you're just going to repeat what you have not repaired. So, you know, it's, um, and it's not, you know, a, a lot of people think karma is a bad thing. Karma is not a bad thing. Um, karma is just the universe bringing the same situation up again to see if you're at a place right now where you're going to make a different choice. So a lot of people think, oh, yeah, that's going to be karma for you. That's bad. That's bad. But really, it's the universe giving you another chance, you know, to do something different. Because the universe and God loves us, so, you know. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep, you just got to work through it. So I'm going to get into this next question. 
If faith is the strongest currency you possess, what is the difference between living in faith and living by faith? Mm. I feel like, I mean, a part of me that came up with that question, too, um, when I was thinking about it, is the difference between um, people who are religious and people who are spiritual. I feel like people from, and this is just my opinion, but I feel like people who are religious are living by faith. The people who are spiritual are living in faith. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but... One is teaching you how to guard it. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely important. That's the message right there. Um, so, if you can elaborate on the meaning of your book, Teach Them Young. Um, so, what is the message behind that? What is your mission statement behind that title in that book? Um, to teach our children early what we learn late. Mm. Because it goes into our next question as far as uh, key number 21. Uh, bad seeds don't lead to good fruits. Does mm -hmm. this key explain breaking uh, family curses? Yeah, and it explains why you have to teach them young. Because, you know, if, if you're at a certain place and, um, you know, you haven't fully healed or um, recognize your healing or recognize that you have to um, heal yourself, then you're you're teaching your kids based off of you know your trauma or based off of your emotions so yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. and as well as just with your intentions and your energy mm -hmm. that's that's the that's the really thing that's important just for, for our children for adults it's period no period um that you can't pump the universe if you do it in bad energy mm -hmm. and you're showing something Some people find out that it's not a good truth. Mm. 
Slave to wow. your ego. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, oh, wow. At least some shackles. You are a slave to your ego. Uh huh. Wow, that's a fact. You know. That's why when the enemy was in the conquer, the enemy outside stands no chance to answer your question. That's why I don't master you so important. Right. Absolutely. I love that. And you know, I just um, I'm so into like you know angel numbers and everything like that. So I was like, wow, it's really, uh, it's a beautiful thing how you correlated the self-mastery chapter as like number three, because um, number three is a number of creativity, communication, and expression. So those are the things you're gonna need to, you know, master self for sure. But not only that, uh, reading here, it says that the number three, it symbolizes the growth and magic um, and the magic that results from the combination of two things, which is the metaphorical child brought from both parents, full of energy and possibility. Um, so I'm just like, wow, number three, chapter three, self mastery. It was, you know, it was meant to be, you know. Absolutely. It was Absolutely. definitely, yeah. Meant and to I, be. After I went to Colorado and I wrote this book in a, in a place called The Garden of the Gods. Mm. Woo. And I, Absolutely. I'm going to um, get the links for your song and your music video and definitely post it on this interview uh, once we're complete. But, wow. You know, uh, we did talk about key number 27 before, um, confront your triggers. Right. So why is this very important as far as your self-development to confront your triggers? Um, so that you act appropriately in each yeah, if it's not your be you're, you're moving in the wrong way in the wrong season or moving, moving in a new season mm -hmm. the way you did in an old season is detrimental to your heart. Mm. Mm. So, dealing with your triggers at some point in time, man, the they still prison for us brothers who don't know how to confront them, our triggers, knowing that something like that's going to push your button and we're going to act out. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. That just blew my mind right there. Like, you have this world capitalizing off of People you not being able to heal yeah, yourself yeah. or, yeah, or you not being able to, you know. Control your emotions. Control your emotions. Control your emotions. Or your triggers. Or identify yourself. Because you know how to be everything that they told you to be. Mm -hmm. Everything that they put in front of you and told, and told you that you were. You know how to do all that. And Right. You identify all that. You don't identify none of this greatness that you are. Mm. So how would you? Then why would you? If you happy with this false identification, you happy with the with with with, with the the deaf culture. You're happy with the, the self genocide. You're happy with all this. Like, why would you? 
Yeah. I feel like a lot of people have accepted that as their identities. Mm-hmm. I did. I did. And that's how me having to make it make make that change when I said I had to I re identify myself. I had to re identify myself. I wasn't. Right. I think totally made me out of work. Yeah. 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 Right, exactly. I just think that's the journey for humanity. You know, when we come to this 3D plane down the earth, you know, it's just like, okay, you got a social security number, we're going to identify you with a name, identify you with this, you know, birth certificate and a social security number. So, so they can track you. Right. It's a tracking device. Right, but not only that, you know, someone else is giving you your identity. So that's your purpose during this lifetime to figure out who you are. Take that time to work through your triggers and your traumas, you know, for self-development. And that's exactly, you know, um, what what key number 27 is all about and why it's so important. Um, so for the next question, how did you come up with Manifest University? And how can someone benefit from being a student with Manifest University? Okay. Um, first of all, big Congratulations on that. I said congratulations on that, by the way. Like, that's a big, a huge accomplishment. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Netflix University is a, at this point, it has grown to a subscription service, a monthly subscription or a yearly membership service. Um, but it is a, um, your first question is how did I come up with it? It came up, it created itself. Um, a big thing that comes along with tapping into your purpose is that divinity just carries that along. class. community I will say I, I've, I've joined a few of these calls um, and it, it has a, a lot of wonderful great yes. people and a lot of great minds yes um, in that group yes I, I um I just want to point this out because James will listen to it and I'll be right there and it's just like you know everyone when when uh, y'all be like on live and stuff and zoom calls. just yeah zoom calls it's just like the frequency is so high because you know the intention is there like everyone here or there in your community is just like and the intentions are to become like a better version of of ourselves um to raise the frequency and vibration yeah and that's the environment that that you create that's the you know it enables you to grow better um to let your guard down like we all grow and Mm -hmm. and blossom better as being you know when we're in a healthy environment so it's just a it's a a really healthy environment it's based on goal execution so Mm -hmm. when we see everyone around making moves and doing stuff and and we have accountability you know days where we're Accountability system and partner, like so. Whatever you need to get to the next level, there. 
Wow. You got other people holding you accountable. So that's yeah. one of the reasons why I like listening to it because you got a whole bunch right. of great minds. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone is 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 everyone is helping each other grow and ascend to get to that next level. So exactly. I, I I've greatly benefited from it because I yeah. it, like I said it's got a, a lot of great people in there. Absolutely. Right, exactly. I was going to say that because when James was on, like your different um, guests and members were speaking, I'm like, wow, just taking key nuggets from everybody, you know, and just using it as, a, as uh, like collective information. Like I collected all these these key notes, you could say, or um, this key information from everybody, you know, is it's pretty amazing. I mean, in the two, a lot of the people that's in that group got businesses of their own. Yeah, too, the entrepreneurs so. definitely and got businesses as well. Um, so, you know, this is Manifestation March here on Tur Talk on one five point one Live. You know, you have your book about manifesting. You dedicated a whole. Oh, I'm sorry. So, um, you know, this is Manifestation March here on Terror Talk on 105.1 Live. So we wanted to dedicate the full month of March to manifestation. So, okay. Well, you guys, <laughs> we're going to have to go ahead and give um, Brian Hippolyte a call back. But thank you guys so much for tuning in with us. You know, you are definitely supposed to be here at this very moment, um, listening to everything that that is going on because this is the universe um, giving you the energy, aligning you with the energy um, that you're asking for and what it is you really want, you know? So I want you guys, I want you guys to go ahead and um, listen to part three of clip three of the I am affirmations while we chop it up with Brian and get him back on the line. Um, you're tuned into to Terror Talk on 105.1 Live.
Uh, we are back. Thank you so much for tuning in to Terra Talk on 105.1 Live. We have our special guest here, Brian Hippolyte, on the line, straight from Florida, calling in. And we are so honored and abundant to have his energy and presence here on Terra Talk. So we're going to hop right back into the interview here. Um, so, Brian, I'm just, you know, a real big fan of manifestation. So I'm curious to know, because I have, you know, like, hmm, maybe one or two, you know, different techniques for manifestation, but what manifestation techniques do you have or do you practice? I practice uh, definitely affirmation. Obviously, that's, that's definitely something that, 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 I, that I practice. Mm -hmm. um, I practice speaking in a future tense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you already have it? Absolutely. Wordplay. Or, or even going back and saying, and then this is an exercise that me and one of our uh, other amazing minds at MU uh, go through. And mm -hmm. we're, as if we're speaking next year, but today. Today, today. Mm -hmm. um, so next year, and speaking of what we did in the previous 12 months. You know, so like we going going through that, those exercises, like attaching your mind to certain things and then just push in that direction. Um, uh, gratitude, uh, I'll show a gratitude yes. wow. jar, uh, that I used to laugh at, but now I just see, well, not, I won't say laugh at, but I did see the power in it, how, you know, I thought it was like, like a cheap, cheap thing kind of thing, like, no, there's the power in the, the intentional token that I could create for my blessings and for my manifestations and for the things I'm thankful for. Um, Wow. Lately, I've been uh, like sex magic is real. Sex, sacred sex, sex magic. Um, sacred. Wait, can we talk about that? Um. Well, actually, I'm gonna uh, let you finish first, but I want to talk about that because I don't really know a lot, but I've been getting you know some information here and there. Um. I guess it's just is it just basically like the the union between the divine feminine um, and divine masculine, like, and together that energy creates sacred sex, and then you can manifest through that energy? Is that what I you think, mean? Well, the, way, the way that I, and, and, and this is something that I'm learning, mm -hmm. something that I just started practicing, um, but the way, I mean, I'm, and I'm actually teaching a class on, on it um, on April 4th, and and it's going to be a good time the way that I understand it, the way that I'm uh, breaking it down. Like, sex magic is sacred sex. Oh. Okay. So, uh, one is, you know, one of the things sacred sex or sex magic desire would be, would be the act of intentionally um, combining our, our energy um, and manifesting something in this dimension. Mm -hmm. Sacred sex is the way that we're supposed to be having sex. Sacred sex is uh, intimacy of the mind, the soul, and the body mm. versus just the body. And we've all, mostly, most of us been having sex uh, with uh, experiencing a third of the way that we were created to experience it. Mm. Only just going, imagine that. You only been in 30% of it. Right there, so definitely shout out to her. One thing that I want to say too about um, what Brian was saying, as far as like one of his uh, manifesting techniques, mm -hmm. um, Brian speaks of about um, he speaks about um, chapter seven, uh, the power of words. Mm -hmm. I feel like that goes into the whole uh, manifesting as well, um, as far as sound being uh, a vibration, mm -hmm. loose lips sink ships, uh, poor mouth. Uh, Vegas, a poor life, only speak what you want to manifest. Like, 
and 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 his and one of his favorite um his, one of his favorites was um eighty nine daily affirmations. Yes. So could you yeah, could you kinda explain the power of our words, how the power of our words are basically spells. Yeah, absolutely. When you when you learn how to when you learn uh, the system of putting letters together and enunciating them mm -hmm. to create something, that was a system called spelling. They, 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 and we learned how, and even believed when we were young, that by uttering our desires, even if we, if we did it loud enough, what we wanted was going to come to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh, so from the very beginning, our, we are a vibration, and our words are a vibration. And right. vibrations seek out their similar, their likeness. Our words are so powerful. We've always been heard. We've always been told that you know the words, our tongues are like a double-edged sword. That there's life and death in our tongue. Our words are so powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. Will will things into your reality? Mm -hmm. The words are so, are so powerful that they can damage who you believe you are. Right. You know, so you have to be so careful with those because then they will create spells. And, yes. And 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 and, 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 and just by definition, you know that. Placing your um, opinion into something and, and, and making that be in real time, in real, you know, in, in real life. That's the fact. Do you think thoughts are just as important as, as words? Absolutely, because mm -hmm. it starts with our thoughts. Yeah. Our it, it starts with our thoughts, and, and that's why we had to reprogram our mind. And a lot of people are, are trying to fight their thoughts with a thought, and you can't do that. You have to fight a thought with your words, because your words are more powerful. Yes. Yeah. The audience we speak or whatever cancel out that negative thought. Uprooted. Figure out where it came from. Uprooted. But then, use, you know, use, use your words to, to reprogram your thoughts, you know, because your mind believes what it hears. That's why mm -hmm. the I am affirmations are so powerful, because your mind believes what it hears, mm -hmm. especially after it's heard enough time. Yeah, it only takes 21 days to, to create a habit. So, but when it comes to affirmations and, you know, training your mind, you probably want to get it way before 21 days, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I have... But that's also a good way to uplift your, your triggers that he talked about. Yeah, too. absolutely. That's, that's a fact. I'm doing it for fun when you remember, though, I'm powerful. I'm whole. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and something about you will want to identify with that versus the broke version of you, the broken version of you that wanted to handle it another way. Exactly. And, and that's how it, that's really how it looks in real time, right? You're like, no, I want to stay over here on this side. I already know what that side looks like, but I, I kind of, I want to stay over here. Right. I have come to learn that the English language has a lot of these particular mm -hmm. hidden spells in it, like. You know, when we wake up, first thing we say, good, good morning. morning. Morning? Like, why are you morning in the morning? You know, well, why are you morning first thing when you wake up? So I say grand rising. So the opposite of great. So, so we don't even say good morning, right? We say grand rising. Great exactly. Rising. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's definitely a good example of how words could be spells. Um, so tell us, Brian, what is next for you and your journey, and what can we expect out of the rest of 2021 from you? Uh, the rest of 2021 looks like 40 Manifest University into uh, and, and, and not just not as a citizen, but mm -hmm. body of it, building these legacies around me. Um, elevated, and you know, I have the saying that a rising tide raises all hope. So, um, for those who are in Manifest University early last year, I was committed.
that you're doing all this with your mm-hmm. pack part, I, that's one of the, like that's that's what me and my queen are trying to do with mm-hmm. our platform as far as getting you know powerhouse um and such yourself that's what we're going to do that's what we're going to do yes that is that is what we're doing now that's what we're currently doing um but there's a lot more uh big uh big names that we want to get on the show um yeah we will definitely in the next seasons to come for sure um so before we wrap it up Mr. Hippolyte, please tell us how our audience can get in contact with you. How can we get your book and um, get in contact with your social media? Absolutely. Uh, well, you can find uh, me on any platform at Brian Hippolyte, F-B-R-I-A-N-H-Y-P-P-O-L-I-T-E. Brian Hippolyte at his home. Oh, perfect. Wow. In the Manifest University uh, mm-hmm. website, it's www.manifest.university. Awesome. I'm sure a lot of our listeners, if not everyone, is going to go straight over to your website and your social media to, you know, follow you and, um, you know, basically see what you're all about. And everyone, Brian Hippolyte has um, announced um, a special offer and discount so all of our Terra Talk listeners will actually get 25% off of his full store. Um, just go to his website, put in the discount code uh, Terra Talk, and you you can actually get 25% off his whole store. Please go ahead and take advantage of this because you need to have that book in your life. Manifesting you. Not just you need, you want to have the book in your life. two people in the studio that bought their book off Amazon while they were sitting here before we even started the show. Right. Absolutely. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming through with your abundance and your knowledge and your inspiration and your affirmations. Um, we absolutely love your energy and have to bring you back for a season oh, two. Oh yeah, this won't be the last time. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to coming back. I had a big smile on my face this morning. That's great. Thank you so much. So hang tight for us. Um, everyone, thank you so much again for tuning in today to Terror Talk on 105.1 Live. And until next Saturday, we will see you next time. Peace, love, and abundance. Bye.